right, in this video, I'm going to show you case problem number two that is in the business analytics book by Cengage. And the first question is about a tabular and graphical summary for each of the four variables, along with discussion of what each summary tells us about the movies that are released to theaters. So if we go into the, the uh, Excel spreadsheet, you can see that you have basically four variables that we're looking at for each of these movies. And when we're talking about tabular and, gra and graphical um, summaries, basically, you know, you can get creative with this. So what I did here was basically just put a filter. And if you go up here to data, you click on the data tab and you hit filter, then you can see you can see the range of what you have here as far as how much money uh, the each movie grossed when it opened. You can see the range for the sales. And again, just go from the top to the bottom. You can see how many theaters released it from top to bottom. And you can see the number of weeks released. So in essence, you could write something up to say, for example, in this data set, we have 100 movies. Let me see it down here in the bottom. 100 movies. Now to highlight that super quick, you put your um, cursor at the first movie. If you shift control and down arrow all at once, shift control and down arrow, it highlights all of them for you and you can see 100. Another way that you can do that is if you do a control down arrow, it takes you to the bottom of the list and it says you're at row 101. Well, row 10, the first row is your title. So you know that between uh, top to bottom, you have 100 lines of movies. Either way, that's part of your discussion then. You have 100 movies. Um, within these 100 movies, you can say that you're Opening gross sales ranged between um, right here, the 0.12 and the 179.14. And this is in millions, so keep that in mind. Then you can say that the total gross sales ranged between 23.59 and 532.18. Again, that's in millions. You can also say that of these 100 movies, they were in somewhere between 1,213 theaters and 4,381 theaters. And they were in, uh, they were released for a period of time between seven weeks and 46 weeks. Now we could also look at this for averages. So working in Excel, if you again do shift, control and down arrow, shift, control and down arrow on your data, so you'll see that it's highlighting just the numbers. It will give you the average down here at the bottom. So the average gross sales was 32,085. So 32,085. Now, if these numbers down here aren't showing up for you, right click in this gray area and you can tell it that you want the average, the count, any of these options that you might want, you could put down here. And there's another way that you could do this. If we wanted to look at minimum, maximum, that's gonna give you the range and average, you could do it with a formula. So let's do our formula here. Let's do min. And in this min, this is automatically telling us that we are gonna look at B2 through B102. Sometimes um, Excel gets a little smart for us. <laughs> If you double click on that, it can reinforce that it's picking the right information. So in this case, yes, it's picking B2. See, this is column B2. You'll see it up here, B2 to B102, all the way down here. And it's okay to, to come into this last empty box, or if you wanna change that to be more specific, there you have 101. So that's your min. Now we can do a max, click on this function bar here. Let's look at max. If it's not popping up for you automatically, go ahead and type in max and hit okay. 
And then we are trying again to look at the maximum number. In this case, it's not filling in the blanks for us. So we can highlight our rows of data. We just want the numbers and hit OK. And that tells us 179.14. Now, if we went back up to the top and we looked at our filter, we know 112 or 0.12 and 179.14. That was our min and max. Now let's look at the average. If we look at the average here, we can type that in. Here it is as average. If it doesn't pop up, you can type it. So there's average. And in this case, we want to highlight these rows again. You can either shift and down arrow, you can drag your cursor. You can also do that shift control down arrow to get to the bottom. Ultimately, you want it to be B2 to B101. And that's our average. So when we look at this per millions, if we actually wanted to multiply that, you could multiply it. The, the asterisk is times, and you can do one million. And that way it gives you the number that you're looking for. Let's do this one times one million. And this one times one million. And then you can format it with the dollar sign right there. Now, if you don't want those extra numbers after the decimal, just um, come up here to the numbers and I'm in home and tell it to get rid of those. So there we know the min is 120,000, the max is 179 million, and the average is 32 million for gross sales of these movies for opening, I don't know if that's opening day or opening weekend or what that is. Now maybe we want the same information for each of these. You can easily highlight that. When you get this little box in the corner, drag it across. And now we have the same information. If you double click on that um, line right here between D and E, it will make that big enough. Now we have the same information for each of these um, variables. Well, let me show you another thing. If you highlight this and you go to view and in view, you um, tell it that you want to freeze the top row. This is just a handy tool so that that top row stays put that way, when you get to the bottom, you can say, well, opening sales, these are our min, max, and average. Total sales, min, max, and average, and so on. Number of theaters, this isn't actually a number. This is the number of theaters. So let's um, change that. We should not have a decimal. And we don't want that multiplied by a million. So let's take that out. Let's take this out. We don't want it multiplied by a million. It's, we're just looking at the number of theaters. There we go. And the same with weeks and release. We don't need it multiplied by a million. And we don't need it as a dollar sign. So always double check um, that you're getting the right information logically with your analysis, okay? So this then would be a way to look at each of the four variables. Now, when we look at graphing this, so this is more of a tabular, we're just um, looking at it either with our filter, we're looking at it with a few formulas. We could also look at it with a pivot table. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and add a pivot table here. So I'm gonna go into a new tab and copy the data just to show you how this works. And I'll do this as Q1 pivot table. Okay, so this is where you start it. We're back to where we start it. Um, this time I don't have any of the formulas at the bottom. We don't even have the uh, filter on it. So this is exactly where you start it. 
Now, if you go to insert pivot table, it should automatically give you these little marching ants, these dotted lines around the whole data set. It should, and it does. Um, so that's what we want to see. We can put it into a new worksheet or an existing worksheet. I'm okay either way. Um, for this one, I think I'll put it in, an, in this existing worksheet. No, no, I think I'll put it in a new worksheet. Okay, so we know we want the movie title. Maybe we also want um, opening sales. And this basically would give you the same exact thing that we just looked at. It's just these first two columns. So we want the pivot table to be a little bit more intuitive um, and it can do that for us. Now, if we want instead to look at the number of movies, we can tell it to count how many movies we have. Actually, let's move this over here. There we go. So we have 100 movies and the sum is 3,208,500,000. So there we have count and sum. And you can play with these and move them around. Um, if you want it to look at average, go to value field settings and look at average. There we have the average number. If we go back to our first one, you can see that's the same. 32,085,000 is the average. If we want to look at um, the gross sales, the number of theaters and the weeks of release, we can do that with all of this. This is summing it for these three. It automatically defaults to sum. If you wanted to average it, you could average it. So let's take a look here, average and average and average, okay? So same information that we have on the other one, we have 32085, 103819, right here we have that as the average. The next one should be 32.82, and it is. And this last one is 14.73, and this one rounded it up to 15. So this gives you a way to really look at it in a couple of different views, um, but then to, to put that into context. So when you write your discussion, this is what you can do. Just come up with a few of these ideas that are interesting to you and put that into context. Now, another thing that you can do, and this is why this, this question is so interesting, and I think a, a lot of students kind of struggle with it because it's a little bit ambiguous. What's the word? Ambiguity is there. <laughs> you can do a lot of things with it. Um, let's say we want to just look maybe at the top 25 or the top 10. Well, you could do that. Um, the easiest way is maybe by select deselecting all and just pick. This way you can look at what were the top, let's say the top five. Well, here's the top five movies. You could do that by the top 10 if you wanted to. Just add the next, next group in here. Just to see which ones were the top two, the top five or the top 10. So that gives you a little bit more context behind it. Now to put this in a graph, let's figure that out. So basically here we have um, question one. It ended up taking me taking me um, three tabs to do question one, but that's okay. So question two, we are looking at a scatter diagram to look at the relationship between total gross sales and operating weekend gross sales. Okay, so this is the, the opening weekend here. We'll, get, we'll just get rid of these. Um, now, if we look at the third question, we're total gross sales and the number of theaters. Actually, I need these to get deleted there. We're looking at those first two columns for question two. 
for question three, we're looking at these columns. So opening sales and number of theaters. And for question four, oh, actually it's total gross sales and these. So let's go back and undo that. Okay, here we go. So we want opening sales and there we go. For, so for question number two, it's gonna be these two columns. We can get rid of this. I know that's worded a little bit funny. Um, it says total gross sales and operating weekend gross sales right here. So that's what it's, that's why this is maybe throwing some of you all off. It's operating weekend gross sales say it like that. And then the third question, total gross sales and number of theaters. So let's come in here. We want total gross sales and number of theaters. We don't want this one and we don't want this one. Okay, so that makes sense. Total gross sales and number of theaters. And the fourth question, we want total gross sales in number of weeks in release. So we'll get rid of the other two. That just kind of cleans up the data, makes it easier. When you're doing scatter plots, it's helpful to have the two columns side by side. That's why I did that. Um, it's not easy when you have other columns in between that you're trying to do. So in this, what we can do is if you just simply want a scatter plot, you go to insert, you can go to recommended charts and it will have a scatter for you. You can look at all charts and tell it that you want a scatter plot. And then you have a couple of options. Well, you have a lot of options actually, um, if that's interesting. So you can play with this to see what's happening. I like the recommended charts because um, Excel kind of has some logic in it. It, it tries to understand what's happening. So here you have your total gross sales. Um, let's move this over. And so there's total gross sales. So if we look at it, we can see the, um, let's see, operating weekend gross sales and total gross sales right here. Okay, so to give you a little more explanation on the scatter plot, I went ahead and named this y axis here is on your left. That's your vertical. Your horizontal is x. Now, to see which is which, our x is the independent variable. So, what we're saying here is we're trying to see how much the movie made on opening weekend. And then could that even determine how much they make in total? Now we're not doing a regression analysis just yet, but we're setting this up that we could if we want to. But just for the scatter plot purposes, your x-axis goes here um, with the, and you can rename that if you want to. So if I rename that, you just click in here and you can say operating, weekend gross sales. And if we want the y-axis named, you pop in here and rename it, and that's our total gross sales. Now you can, let's make sure there's a space there. I don't know, sometimes it's hard to see. Okay, so then if you want to have a trend line, you click on one of the dots, Notice how that changes when you click on the dot, you right click and you tell it you want to add a trend line. And then you can add, I'd just add a linear trend line here. Okay. And if you wanna change the color, you can, you can change it to a different color. So there you go. You can have it as a solid line. You can have it as, um, there you go, that kind of line. So you can play with it a little bit just to get comfortable with the scatter plots. 
Now, if we wanted to see maybe what the different percentages was, for example, I'm kind of curious, right? When they start a movie for opening weekend and then they know the ending, how much of a percentage increase was there? So I'm just curious and you can look at it by percentage. So we take our total gross sales divided by your opening weekend sales and you can get a percentage. If it doesn't automatically populate as percent, you can click the percentage button. So in essence, this movie increased by 343%. Now, we don't know if that's good or not because we don't actually know, like how long was it sitting out there? How many weekends was it out there? And how many movie theaters was it in? We do if we go back to the original question. But for the sake of this assignment, we don't need to even worry with that. So I'm not going to bother with that today. Um, we'll get into the regression part and all of that later in, in a different chapter. Okay, so that's really all you need to do here with question two. It asks you for a scatter diagram to explore to explore the relationship. And what you can see is because the scatter plot in the trend line is going up, there's a positive relationship between opening weekend sales and total gross sales. That's really all this means is that there is a positive relationship between this. Okay. Now let's move on to question three. And we're basically going to do the same thing. So if you highlight your first or your, your two columns, you go in and you do insert recommended charts and you put your scatter plot in. Okay, this one looks a little bit different and maybe move it up. Get it up towards the top. <laughs> there you go. Now to get your, um, your axis labels over here, you can right click on the numbers, tell it to uh, format axis and Go to labels. Nope, that's not it. There's so many options with this. Actually, you go up here to add chart element. When you add the chart element, you can add the um, axis titles. And we want the primary horizontal title. And we also want the primary vertical title. Okay, and then just like we did with the other ones, you can come in here and label them. All right, so let's get this label as our total gross sales and number of theaters. Now, you can go back to question two, X comes first, Y comes next. So you would know then that. X and Y are these, <laughs> you could label it that way. Or you could look at, because sometimes people have a hard time figuring out which is which. One of the, the best ways I think is to put your filter on, take a peek. So 23.59 and 532.18. So those numbers align with this here at the bottom. So this down here is gonna be your X axis. And this is where I'm going to label it. Oops, total gross sales. And then this here would be number of theaters. Okay. Now, again, if you want to add a trend line to it, you can hit one of these dots, tell it to add a trend line. You can have it as a straight line. You can have it as a curved line if you think that would be best. Um, it's sort of close enough to a linear. You could do that. Either way is fine. And then if you wanna change the color again, just go up here, tell it what color you want. And if you want it to have a, a consistent line, you can do that. Now, if you notice, there's all these options up here. You could have it in a black background. You can have it in a white background. There's all sorts of options that you could choose from. 
Okay, now basically this one here is then telling us there's still a positive correlation because that line is still going up. It's not quite as steep as this one, but it is still going upward. So there's that upward trend in telling us that the number of theaters that a movie is in, the more theaters, the more they're gonna gross in sales, which totally makes sense. It needs to be out there so people can see it so that it can earn money. Okay, now the fourth one is your scatter diagram to explore the relationship between total gross sales and number of weeks released. So let's look at that. Okay, and we'll do the insert, recommended charts. We can hit this one. And now notice if you were paying attention when I did this one, I highlighted the rows or I'm sorry, the columns before I hit the insert chart. So the chart went down here and then I had to scoot it up. This time I just hovered on that first block and it automatically put it where it needed to go. Because we have just these two columns, it automatically knows that this is column X and this is column Y. All right, so let's add, go back to chart design. Let's add the element for each of the axis titles. All right. And then here we have the weeks in release. So total gross sales and weeks in release. Now I can see here that this is Here we go. Okay, so our total gross sales go here at the bottom again. And then we can see over here pretty clearly that the weeks in release is on this side. Here we go. And then again, to add that trend line, just click on a dot, right click, tell it to add the trend line. And then I always like to change the color, make it a little bit darker so it stands out. Okay, so here we're seeing once again that there is a slight upward trend that the number of weeks release um, is positively correlated to the total gross sales. Again, that makes sense because if the movie's out and about for a longer period of time, it should be earning more money. Now, out of curiosity, this outlier way up here, we can click on that, see what it is. Let's see here. Oh, I can get, okay. Weeks in release, 169.61. If we go over here and look at what is 169.61, we can pinpoint that specific movie. And it's called Hidden Figures. So that is our, our outlier. Hidden Figures was released for 46 weeks and it had a pretty good um, amount of sales right here with just 46 weeks in release. Actually, no, that was a long period of time for weeks in release. If we take a look at this, I had that backwards. Take a look at this, 46 is the highest number we have. So you can see that's, that's the issue is that most of them were 28 weeks or less. This one was a lone outlier, 46 weeks in release, and it only made 169 million, only made that. So when we look at 169 million, maybe we wanna sort this, let's see here. You can look at number filters. Let's look at something that is um, greater than 169 just out of curiosity. So these are all 169 million or more. And that one's sitting here at 46 weeks, which just so happens to be, if we look at um, least, let's see, minimum and maximum, that's the, the least amount of money, 169 million for this subset, because we told it that we wanted 169 million or more and it's the most amount of weeks. So that's interesting. So these actually are now showing a downward trend or a negative correlation 
between the number of weeks and this, but that could totally be because of this outlier. If we took this outlier out, let's see what would happen. Oh, we're back to that upward trend again. That was completely an outlier. And sometimes you need to do that. If you can take that outlier out, it helps you to see what the true um, you know, average is happening here. Okay, so hopefully that helps you with case problem two about movie theater releases.